Hi, I wanted to show you the design of a safety kill switch that I just put onto my table saw. I just got it done this weekend after many years of having it on my to-do list and spent a couple of weekends wrestling with design details until I finally got it to where it was uh, solid and reliable and uh, just got it done and tested it and it's working rather well so I wanted to show it to you before I put things all back together again. So I do have this saw partly taken apart to show you how this thing works. First thing I'll show you is the uh, stock location of this power switch which is now removed. So here's the front panel of the saw and you can see there's the this is the up down control over here. The original power switch was over here and you'd hit it with your hand or your knee and there's also a little switch that stuck out that would gash your knee if you weren't careful. So that was a bad place to have a switch in my opinion. So phase two was put in this paddle switch over here and this is a standard switch you can get from places like Rockler where it's push on and then uh, just engage the stop switch over here with your knee or your hand to turn it off. So that was convenient. I did want something that was a bit more easy to get to from left side or right side of the saw in an emergency that would allow me to have both hands on the material and use my feet to turn off the saw. And so I went with uh, what you may have seen before. This is a, a paddle here that rocks back and forth, front and back, on hinges. And you can use that. This is what you hit with your foot to turn off the saw. Let me show you that mechanism in just a minute here. So the um, this wooden paddle itself has a couple of uh, self-returning springs in the back over here. So these are standard door springs and they'll just return all by themselves. And those attach down to a piece of aluminum angle down below that conveniently attaches to my saw base. Uh, I've got a steel base over here that uh, works rather nicely. So the business end of this is over here the um, the piece of wood, the maple board, um, attaches to a brass rod and uh, in a few words that rod then actuates a cable here uh, via a spring and then that cable basically pulls on the switch over here. It's rather simple and the trick was finding something that was in fact simple because it took a few uh, sketches to get it right here. Um, just show you some of the details. This is a uh, this piece of metal over here. This is a rod end. Basically allows some freedom of movement up and down, back and forth, because I had uh, out of parallel legs over here and it allowed for some uh, some air in the alignment there. Uh, that threads into, this is a steel, this is a rod nut, something like that. It's, a, it's just a hexagonal threaded uh, uh, nut, if you will, that I just pushed into this metal over here. And so these two parts working together, the, uh, the, the hex and the, the rod end, gave me a lot of uh, forgiveness for movement back and forth over here. Um, this rod then passes through the Delrin block. Delrin is self-lubricating, so for years of service, um, you know, free of uh, binding, that's a good material to use there. The um, notice the. The spring is connected to a stop collar over here. I just put a cap screw in to give me some height. And uh, the spring was selected so that I can take up the uh, um, overdrive or um, over travel on the cable and not stress out this paddle too much over here. Um, let me show you how that operates. So when you, when you kick on the lever over here, uh, things start moving. Um, the spring is strong enough that it really doesn't extend until the switch is, um, this button gets turned off. So that's the point where the spring is still, um, the switch is off, but the spring hasn't extended. When you do some over travel, you gotta have a little bit of over travel just in case uh, there's slack or anything. Uh, that spring starts to stretch and uh, it will then make sure that the switch is truly in the off position. Um, didn't want this thing to travel too far. I don't want the spring to stretch too much because that'll overstress this paddle and start causing things to break over time. So a stop collar over here gives you a little bit of over travel, a little bit of stretch, and um, keeps things from getting damaged. So, you know, I've only had it for a few days. Um, things have been working really well. Everything slides uh, quite nicely. 
and uh, looking forward to doing some more testing on it and making sure it works good but so far it looks like everything is working just fine here you're probably wondering what this little uh, rust spots are over here kind of a side story um, cats uh, saw my table saw and they thought it was a litter box so uh, you can imagine what happened next so I had to outbox them and this little magnetized plexiglass plate here keeps those little guys out of there so that's working out very nicely. Anyway, I'm very happy with this project. I wish I would have done it years earlier because I spent a lot of time moving my hands around and turning off the saw when I'd rather use my feet. And uh, this allows me to do that. So I hope you all can take advantage of it and build this for your saw. Have a good time.